Hey everybody and welcome back to my channel where today we are going to be doing my October end of month wrap up. So we're going to take a look at everything that I read in the last two weeks of October. Starting with Kill the Queen by Jennifer E. Stepp. So Kill the Queen is the first book in the Crown of Shards trilogy, which is an adult epic fantasy trilogy. And we are following our main character of Everly, who is a royal, but she's like 17th in line for the throne. So, uh, doesn't have a lot of power. Um, and then one day the crown princess decides to kill her mother, the queen, so that she can take the throne. And while she is doing this, she also decides to kill all of the royal cousins so that she does not, um, so that there's nobody alive that can threaten her claim to the throne. Unbeknownst to basically everybody, Everly is actually um, immune to magic. So she survives the assassination attempt finds safety with a gladiator group, troop kind of thing, and she decides to go ahead and learn how to fight so that one day she may kill the queen. This is really, really fun. It is not groundbreaking at all, pretty much. All of the, except for the fact that it is a female main character, um, in an adult epic fantasy, you don't see that as much. But other than that, like a lot of the stuff is just feels very familiar. There are unique things about like the world building and Everly herself, but mostly it still kind of falls into familiar territory. Um, I liked, I generally liked the writing. I thought it was pretty good. It sucked me in pretty well. Sometimes it did get a little repetitious, but not terrible. Um, the characterization of the the characters in this were sometimes a little simplistic for my personal taste, but like the development was more or less realistic. Even, I mean, it was, it's hard because the development is simplistic as well, but it still was mostly realistic. So it, it was fine, but honestly, it was just a lot of fun. And so I didn't really mind any of those things. The only thing I actually struggled with in this particular book is that between the writing and some of the tropes and characterization things, this does actually feel very YA. And it's not. It's very much, Everly is 28 years old. Occasionally, like, conversations come up where you're reminded, oh, yeah, this is not YA. And sometimes it still just feels like YA, which is not great. I don't particularly like that. Um, and that was the only thing that I actually had enough of an issue with that it did affect how, uh, like my reading experience, but overall, again, it was fun. I just really, really enjoyed this. Um, even though it wasn't particularly groundbreaking, but I ended up giving it four stars. I'm very excited to read the next one. After that, I went ahead and picked up a trilogy of books and that is instant attraction, instant gratification and instant temptation by Jill Shalvis. These are, this is an adult romance series. It's the Wilder series. And the basic premise is that we're following a three brothers, the Wilder brothers who own an outdoor adventures company up in the Sierra Nevada mountains in California, somewhere near Lake Tahoe. Um, in this first book, we're following youngest brother, Cam, and he used to be a world-renowned snowboarder until he had a very serious accident. Um, and then we also are following our female lead, Katie, and she is the sole survivor of a bridge collapse, and she basically got in her car and drove until she couldn't drive anymore and ended up in this town, essentially, and takes a job as a temporary office worker. And then, of course, Sparks Fly. And then we have Instant Gratification, and this one is following middle brother Stone, who is just super laid back until he meets Emma, who is acting as the town's doctor. The actual town doctor is her father, but he recently had a heart attack, and so she is taking over his practice in the meantime so that he can have enough time to recuperate. And again, Sparks Fly. And then in this third book, we are following older brother TJ, and he really just doesn't quite know what he wants from life. He's been coasting a lot of the time. Um, and then the female love interest is Harley, and she is been act she has been acting as a town mechanic while she gets a degree in wildlife biology and tries to find a job within that field. And they 
tend to butt heads and also, you know, there's a lot of chemistry there. So of this trilogy, I finished Instant Attraction and I DNF'd both of these books, Instant Gratification and Instant um, Temptation at about 60 pages in. So I'm not going to hold up these books, but I am going to talk about Instant Attraction. And the thing is, the problems that I had with the other two books and the reasons why I DNF'd it were problems that I also had with this first book. So I had two major problems with this trilogy. And the first one is that sex is kind of being substituted for emotion and romance. So there is just a lot of sex stuff going on. So the two main, in all of these books, the main characters are sexually attracted to each other, which is great. I mean, that's, I don't have any problem with that, but like they do constantly think about each other's bodies and how those bodies make them feel and their lust and trying to like get in each other into bed and like it's just a lot of sex and sex adjacent kind of stuff but we don't have any core a lot of corresponding emotion emotional talk or feelings or uh, a whole lot of romance and so um for me I just don't find that that works like I don't I don't mind having a very sex forward book as long as we also have the corresponding emotion and romance as well but because without those two things, it just doesn't really feel like a romance to me because we are, we like, we're missing that emotional connection. In this book, they were very, both of our leads were just like, I love them. And I'm like, but why? You don't really seem to have a solid reason why you love each other. Or like, maybe you do, but you don't realize it. You definitely don't think about it. So I don't know. So that doesn't generally work for me. It is, I think that if you're looking for something that is um, towing the line between romance and erotica without being terribly kinky, this might work for you, um, but it didn't really work for me. The other problem that I had with this is that this just isn't really well written. <laughs> So here's the thing. There's a lot of things going on with this. So first off with tropes, there's a lot of miscommunication in this because all three brothers were never taught how to express their feelings. So they really don't know how to do it. Um, and so they, you know, there's, they don't talk. They just don't talk. As part of this, there's also a very strong B plot with their, with Cam's aunt, who is maybe also an aunt to the other boys not entirely clear on that situation, but she is trying to rekindle her marriage. And instead of just talking to her husband, she's like doing these actions, doing these things for him. And he doesn't quite get it. And instead of saying, this is what I'm trying to do, she's just like, well, fine, then I'm not going to do it and walks away. And I hate, hated that so much. It really was incredibly bothersome. It made me really dislike this particular book. Um, so didn't love that, but also like the characterizations just kind of weren't good either. Like if, as soon as you start poking at them, it was, it was not good. Also the fact that we kind of got, even though these, all of the brothers like should have slightly different personalities, they also were like, wild when they were young and so they were kind of they've kind of got that bad boy slightly alpha like kind of thing going on this is in case this wasn't clear this series was written in 2009 and it feels like it was written in 2009 with these characterizations so just so you know um but also like there was just random stuff within the stories that were little things that had nothing to do with the plot that would just pull me right out because it didn't make sense or it was outright wrong. So for example, in one, at one point in this book, one of the brothers is walking through the woods and swats at a wasp. And my immediate thought is, well, you better have killed that wasp because wasps are full of anger and murder and they will sting you a lot because Wasps are great for nature and we love them in our ecosystem and they are also incredibly territorial. So they, they sting and you just have to be really careful with them. So what I'm finding is either this main character who is supposed to be an outdoor expert is not actually an outdoor expert because they're swatting at wasps or the author is using wasp interchangeably with bee, which in this instance you can't really do. 
And I'm sitting here thinking all of these thoughts and also thinking this is dumb when I'm supposed to be reading a romance and none of this matters. So like it wasn't that that happened a lot, but it happened enough that it was really bothersome. So I did not like these books all that much. Um, I was very generous in my initial rating with Instant Attraction. However, I have since dumped it down to about two stars. And like I said, Instant Gratification, Instant Temptation, I DNF both of those around the 60 page mark. And then lastly, we have Immortal and Death by J.D. Robb, which is the third book in the In Death series, which is an adult murder mystery series that is set in the future. We are following our main character of Eve Dallas, who is a homicide detective, and we're following along on some of her more interesting cases that cross her desk. So um, with these books, I don't necessarily describe the murder because like a lot of the murders, the setups aren't particularly interesting um, and to explain anything more than the most basic of setups is going to spoil things. So I don't generally do that, but it is a murder mystery series, which I do find interesting. So this series is a reread. Um, I have read about half of the books and it was like eight years ago. So now I'm going back to reread them um, and so that I can finish this series out or get caught up, I guess. But the problem with rereading murder mysteries is even, even if it is like eight years later, there's always the possibility that some part of your brain remembers who done it. And in this instance, I don't know if I, some part of my brain remembered who done it, or if it was just completely telegraphed and was really easy to figure out. So I can't really talk about how good the murder mystery actually was. Um, the premise of why people were being killed, like the motivations, were not my particular cup of tea, but there were definitely certain aspects of it that I found more interesting than others. Um, like there were some, some aspects of it that kind of pulled me along as I did find at least some of it interesting. Um, this book is very heavy, heavy on Eve's personal life. She is getting married in this particular book. And so there are some issues that crop up. There's interpersonal relationship things that crop up. Um, and I enjoyed that aspect. I enjoyed her return of Mavis, which is Eve's best friend. She is great. Um, and generally, I thought that this was a very standard kind of in-depth book. I, this is exactly what I expected it to be. Um, I will note that there are a ton of content warnings for this particular series and especially this book in particular. So murder mysteries frequently do have um, content warnings because murders tend to dredge up like dark, dark dirty secrets. And so, I mean, there's always content warnings for murder mysteries, but also Eve and her fiance have pretty traumatic pasts that kind of get pulled to the forefront at various points along this series. And this is one of the really big pivotal books for Eve and in dealing with her past. There are some memories that she has been trying to suppress and they all kind of come to the forefront um, in this book and she fully remembers a moment from her childhood which is very pivotal and also very traumatic. So just know that if you need content warnings be very cautious with this series and especially cautious with this book in particular. But overall I really liked it. I mean I liked it because I knew exactly what I was getting. I had very good expectations. It did not disappoint and I ended up giving this three stars. So now the next part of this wrap up is to talk about uh, the points that I received for reading these books. So I have decided going forward that I am going to basically give myself points for each book based off of whether those books fulfill any of my goals. If this intrigues you, um, I did make an entire video about it. I will leave it linked down below um, and it talks about my goals as well as how I'm going to be giving out points. But um, I forgot to talk about it in my mid-month wrap-up. So we're, I'm going to cover how many points I got for each book. How many points each book netted me for, for all of the books in October. So 
starting with In the Study with the Wrench by Diana Peterfreund, which I got two points for because it is a the second book in a series that I am in the middle of. Then I read Minecraft the Island by Max Brooks, which gave me one point, and then Kingdom of Needle and Bone by Mira Grant, which gave me one point, then Mapping the Interior by Stephen Graham Jones, which gave me one point, Final Girls by Mira Grant, which gave me one point, and then Kill the Queen by Jennifer Eastup actually gave me three points because this is the, when I picked it up, it was number nine for my oldest books on my Goodreads TBR shelf. Um, and then Instant Attraction was actually a reread from this particular shelf, so I got two points for it. And then I had an utter crisis. <laughs> because I had not decided how to deal with my DNFs. So the thing is, these two books, Instant Gratification and Instant Temptation, should have netted me a bunch of points because they were rereads and they were in series and everything. Um, but I didn't feel comfortable giving myself those points because I didn't actually finish reading these books. But I also didn't really feel comfortable giving myself zero points because the whole intent of the goal of why I was reading I was wanting to reread books from this shelf is to determine if I still wanted them on my shelf or not. And I read enough of these books to know I don't want them on my shelf anymore. And so I didn't really feel comfortable giving myself zero points either. So I decided in this instance, I am going to go ahead and give myself one point per book. Um, and then I also decided that DNFs are going to be handled on a case by case basis. And then lastly, Immortal in Death gave me three point no, two points, because it is book number three in a series that I am currently in the middle of. So if you were following along, keeping track, that means that I got 15 points for the month of October, which is not quite a third of 50, which is where I want to be at the end of the year. Um, but I do think it is still a very, very solid start. I am very excited to be even this far along, considering how how much of a struggle reading was at some points in October. So I'm, I'm actually very excited with my 15 points. It is great. And I will continue on with this point method into November. But that's it. So if you have any thoughts or feelings about any of the books that I read in October, you want to let me know what you are reading or read in October, let me know down below. But otherwise, that's all I have. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, have happy reading, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!